Hello and welcome. It's that time of the year again where we get all the cars we've tested over the past year in one place. Yes, we've got quite a lineup here this time for the awards. Yes, we are here for the Bloomberg TV Auto Car India Awards 2015 presented by Reliance General Insurance. And as Renuka said, quite an extensive lineup and a great example of how rich and varied the Indian automotive market scene really is today. That's true, Karthik. I mean, we've got everything from the real small cars like the Go and the Alto K10 Auto to the super sexy sports cars like the F-Type Coupe. And there's a massive range in between. Absolutely. And I think what we're going to do is jump right in and introduce you to all the contenders and the jury members who are tasked with picking one car out of all of these as Car of the Year. So let's get to it. We'll start with the biggest chunk of our market, the hatchbacks. The first two are the smallest and may not have the best levels of safety, but they provide affordable mobility. Maruti Suzuki recently beefed up their entry-level offerings by the addition of the Alto K10. With a 1.0-litre engine and an automatic gearbox option, it is truly an affordable automatic. With the go, Datsun has added something new to India's cutthroat entry-level hatchback market. Size and peppy performance aren't in short supply on this Datsun. Maruti Suzuki revolutionized the budget hatchback space with the Celerio, the first truly affordable automatic gearbox equipped hatchback in India. Hyundai's large hatchback, the i20, has become the elite i20, which means it's bigger, cooler and even more sophisticated. Hyundai has entered the booming sub 4 meters sedan space with a grand i10 derived superb all-rounder, the Hyundai Accent. The comeback car for Tata, the Zest. The Zest promises to be a great all-rounder and great value. The fourth generation of Honda's cornerstone of success, the City, keeps its winning formula and multiplies it with a diesel engine. And to give Honda a tough fight is Maruti Suzuki's SX4 replacement, the new Sierra's. It bristles with typical Maruti sensibleness. In its 11th generation, Toyota has given the Corolla Altis a dramatic makeover. The executive sedan is as reliable and solid as ever, but clearly it's trying to shake off its boring image. Honda broke new ground in 2014 with their first MPV for India, the Smart and Urban Mobilio. It's a sensible MPV that's fun to drive as well. Climbing up the cash curve, we get to the first of the luxury cars. The little Mini is as cute as ever, but it's built on a bigger, more spacious platform and also boasts of a diesel engine, which make this a more serious player now. Then we have the smallest luxury sedan in India, Audi's A3. It may be small in size, but the luxury factor and the driving experience promises to be as rich as any Audi. Mercedes has a rival to the A3, the CLA. But this is the high on steroids, 355bhp, CLA 45amg. It packs a wallop in its small package. Also new for 2014 is the all-new C-Class. Yes, it looks like the S-Class and it also has a similar focus on luxury. BMW's 3GT has a more spacious backseat, more ground clearance and more boot space when compared to the regular 3. And that too at a reasonable price tag. But if it is the pinnacle of comfort and status that you seek, then you have the all-new S-Class from Mercedes. Whether it's a visual, auditory or adrenaline rush, the Jaguar F-Type V6S is built to assault your senses and it does so in a delightful manner. 
there are the SUVs too, but we will come to those next week. For now, let's meet the people who will be evaluating these cars. The Autocar Awards jury panel consists of five jurors who carry incisiveness and authority with absolute ease. Manvendra Singh Barwani, he is India's most respected automobile historian. His rich and vast knowledge of classic and vintage cars has earned him a spot on the FIA's Historic Motorsport Commission. He is also on the panel of judges at the Pebble Beach Concours de Elegance and the Kuwait Concours de Elegance. I am basically looking at three or four parameters. One is that the car's stability is there, the driving performance meets the Indian standards, and the fit and finish is there. Then there is Narain Karthikeyan, the fastest Indian. Narain was the first to fly the Indian flag in the ultra-competitive world of F1 way back in 2005. He is also the only Indian to compete in both the rounds of the Indian GP. In 2014, Narain has been racing in the competitive Super Formula Japan Series. Narain has bagged a front row start and multiple points finishes in the season. For me, the most important is uh, the way it drives. Uh, obviously, we, its pricing is important as well because it's for, the, it's for the mass. Also on the jury is Shapur Kotwal, Deputy Editor, Autocar India. At Autocar India, Shapur is hands-on with road testing every car that hits Indian roads. Shapur's expertise and analytical prowess grow steelier every year. Uh, car of the year is the car that's made the biggest difference or the biggest jump in its class. So we look at the new car which has come out and we look at its peers and if it's the best in its, in its peer group by the largest margin, that car is your car of the year. Then there is Horma Sarabji, editor, Autocar India. Horma's is certifiably crazy. Well, about cars that is. And the list of four-wheelers he has driven would be a petrol head's dream from tractors to Formula 1 racers and everything in between. When testing, it is the end user's needs that Hormaz judges the car by. Hormaz sits on the panel of World Car of the Year and Engine of the Year awards. Fitness for purpose. Does the car do the job for the customer it's uh, intended for? Finally, there is our very own Renuka Kirplani. Renuka knows cars inside out as she has grown up in garages and park fermes in the world of rallying. Now, the auto car show lets her indulge her passion without getting her hands too dirty. Renuka's experience of driving every new car in the country and many from around the world has landed her a spot on the Women's World Car of the Year Award, the World Car of the Year Award and the Engine of the Year Award. It's not really a comparison between the cars present but more uh, as to which car fits its class, um, stands out in its class, offers the best value, I think. Um, and what the Indian consumer requires, I mean, we all look for space, we look for comfort, we look for a car that gives us a good level of equipment and a good value. And I think it, it has to be um, a holistic product. Even though they are veterans, the jury were briefed by auditors from PricewaterhouseCooper on the scoring methodology. With the briefing done, the jurors headed to the cars. The focus obviously was on the meat of the market, the hatchbacks. The big Dats and Go might have a small price tag, but it has a lot of fight in it. Simple, um, easy to drive, peppy engine, good fun for the roads. But the Go's lack of appeal on the inside put it at a bit of a loss here. Next up was Maruti Suzuki's most recent launch, the Alto K10. Its 1.0-litre engine and automated manual transmission were under close scrutiny. The steering was quite a surprise, quite a little quick steering. And uh, again, very user-friendly, very easy to drive. Uh, sufficient pep from the engine, uh, which is uh, you know pretty good, so that really adds to the kind of uh, ease of driving uh, experience uh, along with the AMT. So, yeah, I think a cleverly designed uh, package, but uh, still a bit basic. Then, also from Maruti Suzuki was the Celerio. 
It also offers a 1 litre engine and the convenience of an AMT, albeit in a much more spacious package. One little car, that's what I can say. I enjoyed my short drive in it. And it's really a very, very, if you use the transmission correctly, it's really an epic car. Space wise, it's, it's, it's fair, I would say. It's, it's, it's the right size of car for its price. In terms of price and size, sitting at the other end of the hatchback segment is Hyundai's i20. And it was making quite an impression. In terms of interiors, in terms of equipment, in terms of space, uh, in terms of uh, I think everything, this car really feels um, a step ahead. Body control is pretty good and um, it runs very flat in the corners when you're cornering at uh, kind of a little bit uh, um, higher than normal speeds. Um, the drivability of the engine is, is not too bad. So what did the Hyundai i20 lack? The feel of the steering is very vague, so that's one thing I don't like about it. But uh, ge generally, it's a uh, you know uh, well put uh, uh, you know it's a package that's put very well together. After the hatchbacks, it was the turn of the Indian specials, the sub four meter sedans, and it was Hyundai's Accent that was dissected first. Like all current day Hyundai's, it is smartly designed, pretty well built, and very well equipped. But what makes it stand out? The diesel engine, that's really their talking point because the three-cylinder new diesel engine, uh, it's very tractable, so great in city driving, but at the, on the highway it does run out a bit of steam. So, but uh, overall, yeah, a good car. Would Tata Motors impress with its AMT-equipped offering, the Zest? You do feel the shifts, it's perceptible, but you have to, uh, you know, understand that it's not, you know, a, a conventional automatic, it is uh, an AMT and the fact is it comes at great value uh, and I think that is the key over here. Nonetheless, there was no doubt that the Zest was well engineered. I think, um, you know, it's a great comeback for Tata. The car really on fit finish levels, on, uh, you know, quality levels has risen. It's still not up to the league of maybe, you know, some of the other uh, global players, but it has improved in leaps and bounds. It looks really nice. It's a car that you feel happy being inside of now. After the zest, it was the turn of the stalwart of the mid-size sedan segment, the Honda City, to show what it could do. The core proposition of this car still remains this brilliant petrol engine. It's it's just keeps getting better with every generation, keeps getting smoother. It's something extra special you get in a car of this class. I think in terms of uh, refinement, it could be a, a little better. But uh, otherwise, uh, really, this car is uh, an excellent package as a, as a mid-size sedan and really is good for both uh, driving and being driven in. I think, uh, you know, this is a very, very strong contender for Car of the Year. It's really got a lot of values going for it. I think if there's one downside, it's pricing, uh, which is on the high side in its segment and in its class. Uh, but I think otherwise, uh, this car's got it all. The Siaz is Maruti Suzuki's rival to Honda City. And clearly, it had come prepared to this fight. As a Maruti proposition, it's uh, pretty brilliant, I'd say, because uh, if you look at the competition, if you look at the gap to the city, it's around a lakh and something. It drives pretty nicely. The 1.4K series engine is nice and peppy, it revs, it's got a decent amount of power. It's, I'd say, summing it up, it's nicely balanced. I would say it's a, a very comfortable car to drive, fun to drive. From my point of view, it's not, but uh, but I think for just to drive every day, uh, have you know comfortably, I think it's uh, not too bad. However, the Siaz also had a chink in its armor. Really, very capable car, the Siaz, uh, though a bit plain vanilla. Uh, nothing hugely exciting about it, but uh, it's got a lot of plus points. From the design side of it, you know the looks. Uh, I would say it's very poor, but the good value for money. Sitting a rung above is Toyota's Corolla Altis. Frankly, it's a very, very comfortable car. 
ride is really good for our roads, really got great suspension. So not a very sporty drive, but very practical, comfortable, and uh, something that's expected from the Corolla. But Toyota's attempt to make the Corolla sleeker and cooler seem to have fallen a bit short. Dashboard is a very flat-faced 1950s dashboard, which is very sad. I mean, such a nice look. I mean, all right, it's a very mediocre looking car. At the same time, it should have some sort of styling inside. Then it was the turn of Honda's first MPV for India, the Mobilio. Styling and the design, really, really attractive. Doesn't look like a van at all. It's a really nice free driving engine. Um, it handles nicely. And I think for the passengers, it's got a really nice ride quality. I mean, it took the bumps and potholes really well. But it wasn't all rosy for this Honda. I think the interiors, it needs to be lifted a bit more. This is very staid, it's very boring and it doesn't sort of fit the class. I think that's what's missing. In certain ways, this does let it down, especially because it, it is not a really affordable car. It is slightly, this price at a premium above the Etika. So, a sort of mixed package, but there's plenty here if you like this car. Of the 22 contenders, it's time to meet the six from the luxury car space. <laughs> First up is the Mini Cooper, and the compact hatch in its third generation was proving to be as charming as ever. Funky interior, handles well, you know, drives really nicely, and I think uh, this car is, is always something special, and it still feels like that. Steering wheel is absolutely directly connected to the front wheels, and it's got a brilliant balance. I think we've got a pretty bad surface here so you just felt that the ride was a lot better and nicer and it coped with our terrain much better. It's expensive so it, it prevents a lot of people from going in for the car. Audi is also growing the compact luxury segment down the size chart this time with their A3. But is it still a luxury car? I'm surprised at the package that the Audi has created. It's a beautiful driving car. Lovely package, absolutely. I like the subtle, subtle but you know subdued styling that it has inside. It's not an overdone car. I think really there's very little to complain about in this car. Uh, like I said, backseat space is one of its its uh, you know uh, downsides. But I think when you're behind the wheel, there's really very very little to complain about this car. <laughs> Then it was the turn of Merck's fire-breathing baby, the CLA 45 AMG. A lot of fun this car to drive and uh, it's small, it's, uh, it's nimble, it's, um, it's, it's a lot of fun. The one factor obviously which, is, uh, which, is, uh, which doesn't go with the AMG badge is, the, is the, probably the, the noise of the car because the first four-cylinder turbocharged engine is pretty quiet and it's not uh, you don't have the grunty, grunty roar of uh, uh, you know AMG V8 normally, um, but um, you know, it's, it's quite, uh, quite nice to drive. It's for our road conditions, maybe it's a little bit too harsh, but uh, a a a a AMG car needs to be like that in order to uh, develop the kind of performance it's uh, you know it's meant to do. Our next Mercedes is the C-Class and it's aiming to take the luxury factor to a whole different level in its class. They have taken it to a far greater level. It does give the feel of absolutely plush luxury and I especially like the steering wheel. The styling of the steering wheel is finally changed in the Mercedes Benz. As compared to its competition, I think it's a very solidly built car. Gives you a very good feel on these bad roads. Obviously, it's a little bit sluggish from the uh, from an engine point of view. Um, the bigger engines are going to make the car so much more, um, I think, fun to drive. Uh, but, uh, but you know, as I said, the it's um, you know the package itself is phenomenal, and it's the new benchmark for. I mean, it's setting the new standard for this uh, segment. BMW's crossover sedan, the 3 GT, is spacious and practical. But does it still feel like a proper BMW? Problem is, it doesn't look as attractive as something like a 3 or a 5. It doesn't have that nice swell silhouette of a 3 or 5 series. And it doesn't drive as well. But because it's a BMW, it drives 
better than everything else. Then it was the turn of the car that is touted as the best car in the world. Could it impress this diverse jury? The first thing that strikes you is for something that's this big. It's it handles really, really phenomenally well, and it's so agile, uh, like a almost like a sports car. It's a fantastic package. This is the 500, so it has a lot of grunt, um, and it, you know you can feel the power. It pushes you to you know into the back seat, into the seat. This car is all about just just the effortlessness of it. You know, it just wafts you to speed so calmly, so serenely. Uh, really hard to fault this car actually, except for the crazy price. And finally, it was the turn of the snarling cat from Blighty, Jaguar's delicious new F-Type. I for one have driven the old Jag, so I, I sort of remember back what an XK120 feels like, one XK140 feels like and even the E-Type. It's very civilized, that's surprising. Those cars were not civilized at all, but this car with that kind of power is superbly civilized. In any, 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 anybody can just sit behind this car and call himself a race driver. Maybe it's not as good as uh, some of the quicker Porsches, but uh, that's a huge step, and Porsche is way ahead of everybody else. So I think uh, overall brilliant job from Jaguar, and we can only hope for more. Wow, that was a lot of information to digest. All those cars being tested, and honestly, all these years that have been coming for the jury rounds, after watching all the action, I could narrow it down to a couple of really strong contenders, but this year, I am lost. <laughs> <laughs> well, I can tell you, it was pretty much the same for us at the beginning. Normally, you come into the jury round saying, ah, oh, you know, there's a few standout cars, but this year, there was like a standout bunch of cars, you know. A uh, big slugfest. A, yeah, it's a big slugfest. It's a really closely fought battle, and it was tough because we really had to get down to the nitty gritties. We had to put our thinking caps on and really get into it. But it's time for you guys now to put your thinking caps on because you can also <laughs> vote in for the viewer's choice car of the year or bike of the year. The winners get to come and present the awards with us at the ceremony. Well, how do you vote? Information's on your screens right now. Okay, don't vote just as yet because you haven't met all the contenders in action because the SUVs will be coming your way next week. And of course, we'll also have all the action from Bike of the Year. So stay tuned to the Auto Car Show for part two of the jury round next week. <laughs>